Python in five minutes, no time for an intro. So let's start with commenting out lines. You can use a hashtag to comment out a single line and triple speech marks to comment out multiple lines. Next, we have variables. Variables store data and have a unique name. There are a couple of rules for naming your variables. Pause here to take a look. As I was saying, they store data and the four main types are here. Strings, which are an array of characters. Integers, which is any whole number, negative or positive. Floats, any number, doesn't have to be whole. And booleans, which can only be true or false. These are the main four and there are a couple more which you probably won't use. Now you need a way to input or output this data from the user and you can do this with the print and input statement. The print statement outputs the value to the command prompt and input inputs it from the user. Now continuing on with the data types, strings are assigned with either single, double or even triple speech marks if you're trying to assign multiple lines. There are many unique ways to rearrange strings which is called string manipulation. Here's some quick theory. Strings are arrays of characters so you can get certain characters with square brackets and the number of characters in the string just like an array. We've also got upper which puts the string in uppercase, lower well you can guess what that does, strip which removes white spaces and split which lets you split the string with a character you specify into a list and there's many more on the screen. Moreover, we have escape characters using the backwards dash, so backward dash n, which puts string on a new line, backwards dash speech marks, which lets you put speech marks in the string, and there's a lot more functions for strings which you can pause here and see. Now for floats and integers, you can convert between them by putting the data type outside the variable, and you can even do this for strings if the string is a number. You can also use type to find out what kind of variable it is, and this applies to all data types. Now for some if statements, these are selection statements which will run if the conditions are set to true. You can set these with the following comparisons, so if a plus b is 5, then the script will run and we can create all kinds of conditions and if you have a bool which is true you can put this inside an if statement and it will run now you can throw a bunch of these together using logical operators so and or not and you can connect them together like this you also have elif which will be the next statement called after if and else which will be called if the if and elif conditions are not desirable after talking about variables we have lists and you can throw a bunch of different variables into them I could have a list of strings and it means you don't have to create a bunch of variables and you can refer to each piece of data by using the square brackets and remember everything starts from zero. Add to them using the append and remove them using the remove command. Just like I said before, strings are arrays and you can use some of the functions we had before on lists, so length or type. Tuples are pretty similar to lists except you can't edit tuples. You use brackets for assigning and you can't append or remove, which begs the question, why use them? Well, they're much faster and you can use them as dictionary keys, which we'll cover in a second. Sets again are similar to tuples and lists. However, you can't have duplicate values and this is useful for sorting data into groups. You probably learned about this in maths, functions like union, or intersection and here are some sorting commands you can use. Continuing on from tuples we have dictionaries. Dictionaries compare data types and this makes it easy to get the values very quickly if you know the name. Just like sets you can't have duplicates but unlike tuples and sets you can change the values of the ones you assigned and remove them. It's pretty inefficient to write the same code multiple times and in this case you'd use a loop and there are two main types. We have while and for loops. A while loop depends on the condition you assign at the top so as long as this is true the loop will keep iterating. A for loop is used when you know how many times you want the loop to iterate. You can use this using range, so if I put for i in range 5, this will loop 5 times. And honestly, you can iterate through anything, lists, tuples, and files. If the current iteration of the loop isn't desirable or a certain condition is reached, you can use the command word continue, which will skip the iteration of the loop. If you want to stop the loop entirely, you can use break, and this applies to both while and for loops. Just as I was talking about inefficiency, you might not want to run the program many times in a row, but call it when you need it. And this is where functions come in. Functions are pieces of code you can call when you need it. Inside these functions, variables are local, which means they won't affect the rest of the script. So initiating a variable inside the function will be unusable outside unless you make it global. You can pass variables into functions by declaring them in the brackets, and you can return variables at the bottom using the return command. So when you call the function, you put the name, and in the brackets, you put the data values you wanted to input. If the function returns a value, you can assign it to a variable which can be used later. You can make a function call itself, which is called recursion. So file handling is what you can use when the information is too much and you want to save it. So these are txt files. You can open a txt file like this, make sure the file is in the correct directory, and you can open it to read, write, append, and create the file using these letters. You can read using read, and you can read lines using read lines. And you can iterate through a file using a for loop and get the values for every line. Make sure you close the file using file.close, or even better, use with at the top, which will close by itself. And then writing is quite 
quite similar, but you use right and right lines. Now, Python is known as an object oriented language, which means you can create objects and control them. And these objects have properties and methods. So you can create a class with class and then the name of the class. Now we need to give it a function called init. And this is what it's called when the class is initialized and an object is created. So this will be used to assign the object properties. So you can use self dot and then any variable or data type you want and what it's equal to. With this, you can create an object. So we can assign an object, let's say object one is equal to this class. And then we can print out values of object one and the variables we initiated in the init. Just like regular variables, you can change them and delete these properties. Next, we have methods I talked about. And these are functions within the class, which you can call with the objects we created. And after that, we have inheritance, which is basically a class inside a class. Now you're at this point in the video, and I'm sure you're probably going to run into some errors. And this is where try and accept comes in. Use try, and if there's an error in any of the code you put inside the try, it will go to the accept command, which will run instead. So you could print some errors. Now there are other modules which haven't been included, and you can install these using pip install. And that's everything. Now obviously there's a couple of modules I didn't include, and if you want another in five minutes video, comment down below. Now obviously there's no time for an outro, so I'll see you later.